rise in anti-Semitism this week following the surprise attack on Israel by Hamas as the Anti-Defamation League now calling on leaders of Fortune 500 companies and other corporations to sign a new workplace pledge and speak out against anti-Semitism. So far, corporations that have signed the pledge include Adidas, American Eagle, and many others. Joining us right now is Jonathan Greenblatt. He's the CEO and National Director of the Anti-Defamation League. Good morning. Good morning. Um, we've seen you... I don't want to say too many times this in the past couple of days, but we have yeah. now, and um, yeah. it's it's a sign of where we are, unfortunately. But but tell us about uh, where you are on this. Well, look, I think one thing I would say, I think for me, and I think for not just Jewish people, I think all people of good conscience, I don't think the world will ever be quite the same. So I think much like 9-11 was a shift and I think a recognition, like an end of innocence, I think this is like that as well. Um, I think all of us are still, again, coping with the humanitarian crisis. You know, the loss of life is just horrible. Um, I would also say that what's interesting for me is like seeing the president speak yesterday so convincingly and so clearly about the evil of Hamas, about the, the, the total in unspeakable horror that happened. Right. What's interesting is to see his clarity, his moral clarity, and then the lack of moral clarity in so many other spheres is is right. hard to cope with. Okay, so you are now asking corporations to sign a, to sign this pledge. To we sign, are to sign this document. We are. Tell me what's happening behind the scenes as it relates to this, and and just as a bit of context. Yeah. There was a period of time in America. Yeah. I would argue after the business uh, roundtable signed yeah. uh, their pledge that business was more than just about profits. We yeah. saw lots of different pledges, statements, yeah. comments that corporations made. Yeah. And in the last year, you've seen a lot of walking back, a lot of silence on a lot of different topics. Yeah. So I'm so curious sort of where things, you know, how this is playing out for you. Well, it's interesting. Like, if we think about the importance of leaders leading, right, and the role that CEOs and other public figures play sort of in the popular culture. I'll tell you, as I think about corporate corporations, first I'll just mention universities, because I think we saw at Harvard the total, utter failure of leadership for days after the massacre, and the students who came out with this bizarre, bewildering right. piece, Yale, Yale University the secretary and dean of academic life put out a piece on the 9th which is truly ghastly in the passive voice we deplore the loss of life on all sides like this was a massacre of civilians and if yale university like harvard like so many right. others can't speak clearly when they have in the past about and appropriately right. by the way about black lives matter and stopping asian hate and climate and so many other issues so then we come to corporations, right? What does the pledge say? What do you well, the pledge that? basically says a few simple things. More than anything, it's we stand with our Jewish employees at a time when anti-Semitism has reached epic levels. In the days after this massacre, the report from the Ministry of Interior in France says there were a thousand anti-Semitic incidents, one, zero, 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 in the two days after the attack. In England, a 300% increase right. since the attack. So the pledge simply says, number one, stand with your Jewish employees. Like, be willing to do and that publicly. So few CEOs have said anything. Jamie Dimon right. wrote an email. Um, Brian Antonio, Roberts, by the way, CEO of this company. Brian did, too, to his employees. Antonio Neri uh, put something up from HP on LinkedIn. And I think, um, who else did? Ed Bastian from Delta. But otherwise, lots of silence. Lots of silence. So we're asking, number one, speak out publicly and say, in the face of evil, it's wrong and I stand with my right. Jewish employees, number one. Number two, in your training, like if right. you have DEI training, make sure anti-Semitism is addressed. That's it. Because I know that most of these DEI programs, they don't include right. anti-Jewish hate. Mm -hmm. And then wait, the third thing, if you have an employee resource group, if you have an employee affinity group, make sure there's one for your Jewish employees if they want it. That's all. So I got to tell you, the bar is so low. It should be easy for CEOs to get. Are people telling us. you no? Well, we're just unrolling it, rolling it out today. We've just been making quiet calls. So I wouldn't say that anyone's quote unquote saying no. John. But let's see how many say yes. Yeah. 
as I, where's the camera, as I look into the camera and say, CEOs, if you are asking yourself, what should I do? Should I speak up? And by the way, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, the Business Roundtable, other sort of big umbrella groups have spoken out, but you, if you're a CEO with Jewish investors and shareholders, with Jewish employees, with Jewish friends and family, this is as easy as it gets. Just stand with them. I've been a little shocked that there hasn't been more outspokenness on some of these issues, because when you look at the images that are coming out of women being raped, of children being murdered, of the fires. But I will tell you, even in my own small world with this, on a mother's club list that I'm on, with only a few hundred moms, right. there's been a, a raging argument back and forth because one mom said, hey, let's uh, raise some money, call your congressman, do some things to reach yeah. out on this. Yeah. Not everybody in town agreed with that. And this is a very small group. And I, I think if you're getting resistance, that is why CEOs are going to be a, re a little reluctant. Look, it's true, Becky. We are a divided country on so many levels. It feels like everything has become politicized. And you kind of alluded to it. DEI has become sort of an evil three-letter word in many places. We are at the World Economic Forum. Right. And I had executive after executive after executive saying to me, we don't use that word anymore. Like, right. I get it. Look, DEI, ESG, all of it. All of it is under a CSR. And most, of the, and most companies it. now would much prefer to make a statement through a broad coalition, like the, like the Business Roundtable, or, or the Council, or the this or the that, because they don't want to stand up and be out there on their own. And well, so the question is, yeah. does that suffice? Is that, um, is, does that mean that these companies have no courage? Should, we, should you be calling them out? Should you not be calling Like, what's the these right answer? Are, these things are always tricky, and I'd much rather work behind the scenes quietly than call people out publicly. Um, but I will say, and I also should say, I get why they want to, CEOs want to talk about, you know, EPS, if you will, mm -hmm. right, not ESG. I, I understand that impulse, too. But there are some issues that are political and that are some that are just moral. This isn't even right or wrong. This is good versus evil. So here's what I think we need to do, Becky, to the mothers group, yeah. to the university students. Right. You just need to say, again, if you look at what happened, this doesn't require you to take a position on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. This doesn't require you to take a position on Middle East politics. Saying that it's wrong to brutalize the elderly, to rape women, to murder parents in front of their children and then seize those kids as hostages? Come on. There is no world in which that's right. And I'll say something else about these students. Like, if you think it is decolonization to gun down teenagers as they're at a peace concert... What do you say to Black Lives Matter? Look, I think, you know, it's interesting, the Black Lives Matter chapter in Chicago... And put in out L.A. A, in L.A., they put out these graphics that say, we stand with Palestine, pictures of people on hang yep. gliders. It is hard to think of anything more sick right. and twisted. And, and right. I will but tell you... See, I just, want to, just yeah. want to say, one of the issues, and they're going to kill me because we, we got to go, we, we, but, but one of the issues here is that after George Floyd was yeah. murdered, yeah. and a lot of corporations came out and supported Black Lives Matter, yeah. right? And then, today, they look at that, and they disagree with that. They disagree with what they Black Lives Matter is what, saying what, today. Yeah. And they're questioning whether they should have supported it in the first place I, because they think that things went too far. Yeah. And so this is the, the conversation that I'm hearing behind the scenes is, this, is if I come out and publicly say this is you know, what, what I believe and I support this, if then that becomes something else later, I'm not defending. By the way, I, I get you. I, I'm with I know, you, Andrew, as you know. You know I'm know, with you. I know you are. I know you are, Becky. I know this network and Brian Roberts and Comcast are too. So let me just say that. But I will say this, the appropriate analogy is not Black Lives Matter, which was a political movement. It is 9-11, which was a clarion call for moral leadership.